collectors have an ever-increasing following among audiophiles, collectors, and DJs. Some say they sound better than digital CDs and MP3s. To cater to this market, some record companies are releasing more music on vinyl, a manufacturing process that's interesting and fun to watch. The first step is to cut a master record. This flat disc is made of aluminum and it will be the core of the master. The surface has a gritty texture early on, but they sand it down and polish it smooth. They place the aluminum discs on a conveyor belt and they ride towards a device that will coat them with a veneer of lacquer. The disc enters the curtain coater. Nitrocellulose lacquer, a similar substance to nail polish, oozes out of a long, thin opening, forming a veil or curtain. As the disc passes through the curtain, it's slattered with the lacquer. Rollers with scrapers catch the runoff. The excess lacquer they collect is reused. The lacquer starts to dry immediately. The solvents evaporate and the veneer hardens into a nail polish like finish. But like any manicure job, there are often flaws. At this inspection station, workers scrutinize each lacquer disc for pits, bumps, or dirt. Even a minor imperfection won't be tolerated, so the rejection rate is high, about 50%. They recycle the rejects. They ruin the good masters with plastic edging. It will stop the discs from rubbing together during stacking and damaging the finish. Next, a worker holds the disc under a hydraulic puncher that cuts a hole in the center. Then, handling it carefully so he doesn't disturb the finish, he places it on a spindle. A robotic arm slides a plastic ring down the spindle, depositing it around the center hole of the disc. Like the plastic edging, the ring will also space the discs apart. Now the master discs are ready to take a trip to the studio. The lacquer disc is about to be cut. The engineer places it on the recording machine, called a lathe. He peels the protective ribbing away from the rim. He places a vacuum line at the center, which suctions to the underside of the disc and holds it in place. The engineer now moves the cutter and a microscope above the disc. He lowers the cutter onto the outer edge of the disc and it does a test cut. He positions a microscope just above the test groove and then peers into it to get a good look at the cut. He makes adjustments to the cut and then he's ready to record. The lathe cuts the lead-in groove and the music begins. The sapphire tip cutter etches the sound into the surface of the disc. From start to finish, the recording will be one continuous groove in the record. The computer monitors the cutting and adjusts the spacing between the grooves where needed. A little vacuum draws up scrap as the cutter carves the groove. Some believe this sound is warmer and has more depth than digital recordings. But making music fit on an analog disc is sometimes challenging. To reproduce bass, the cutter has to make big wide grooves that take up a lot of space. And although the grooves can touch, they can't cut across one another. At the end of the recording, the cutter lifts and the master disc is ready for inspection. If it's acceptable, the engineer places a sliding platform on it and scribes a unique serial number into the lacquer. Soon, this master disc will be used to make more records.
you said you were going to